So we have found that phi one looks like this step function, where in one case, when half of the solution looks like this with t minus t prime, and let's just write this as is often the, as is often written, um, omega k. Uh, e to the minus i omega k, t minus t prime, e to the minus i k r, <clears throat> uh, minus c i theta t prime, minus t minus plus infinity d3 k over 2 omega k, e to the i omega k, t minus t prime, e to the minus i k r. Uh, notice that in the previous video, I think I, I missed the time part in writing one of these two equations. Uh, and so basically we, we see that of these two terms, uh, this function allows us to pick the t greater than t prime solutions, and here, uh, sorry, this one, and this one instead, sorry, this is t minus t prime, so this one allows us to pick the ones where uh, t is later and t prime is earlier, so t minus t prime is positive, whereas, whereas this one allows us to pick the ones that have uh, just the opposite. <clears throat> so they, they allow us to pick the ones where T prime is earlier. Um, and so we have positive energy solutions here. And uh, here we have the negative energy solutions, which kind of uh, seem to be, uh, I guess the, the, the term is usually, the term that is usually used is that they're propagated backwards in time, and this is where the reinterpretation comes in as a different kind of matter, antimatter that's propagated forwards in time. That's That was Feynman's interpretation of this. And uh, maybe it's important to point out that this kind of math, not quite the exact same thing, but a similar kind of math, is maintained in other areas of physics. We've seen positive and negative time solutions, and we always ignore the negative uh, time solution. So for example, in, in ENM, um, you might recall the um, when we have time dependence in our fields, uh, we have equations for the electric potential, phi e, and we're trying, we, we want to determine the field uh, and similar for, similarly for the other part of the four vector um, the four vector uh, phi a uh, which is related to charge density and current density Right, so this is uh, mu naught times the current density. Right. So finding the, the fields, phi, finding the electric uh, potential, sorry, finding the potentials and the, and the vector potential depends on time. And therefore you get that phi at some x, y, z at some moment in time, right, as the sources move around in time, is going to come by integrating over the charge density uh, where the charge is at some moment which is uh, earlier in time, usually called T retarded. Right, so we're integrating over all of space to capture the effect uh, on the field at some location, given where the charge was. 
and the same is true for the vector potential, So you've, maybe you've seen this in e and M, we're integrating over the fields were at some earlier time t, tr. Um, but there's also a perfectly valid solution. So first, maybe we should point out that this uh, is a time that looks like that related to t, where it takes uh, time for the uh, effect to reach uh, that location. But these phi and a are also, we can obtain a phi at a given time and in, at different locations in space as a result of integrating over a uh, y prime, z prime, t later, or t advance, as it's usually written, and dz prime, and the same thing for the vector potential, that we get a solution that can be obtained from j for the current density where the current was at some later time in the future, right? And the solution is usually, well, it's always ignored because our TA is a later time. So we add this to time T and the fields at time T are determined by that later time. That seems to violate causality, right? The idea that the, the effect precedes the cause um, uh, is not something that we accept. We ignore the other solutions. The same thing is true in basic physics. We've seen solutions where, you know, we launch particles from some height and we get a time that involves a plus or minus the square root of something, right? Uh, well, various, we, we, have, you know, we have something and plus or minus the square root of something and we have to pick. And we always pick the one for which t becomes greater than zero. And we ignore the one with t negative. So we always have these kinds of solutions. And in quantum field theory, what we find is that we can't ignore these, these other solutions and we have to reinterpret them, right? Because otherwise we end up with problems with the ground state and these negative energies.